All right. Good morning, everyone. This is the advent of code in Erlang 2019. Uh, through some ad hoc unedited video where I get stuck, press pause to figure it out, and then when the problem is instantly solved, when I remove the pressure of doing everything live, because there is some kind of, uh, I guess, performance anxiety not being able to think because every little mistake you make gets to be seen by everyone. Uh, this is day six, uh, which uh, is now late because I'm recording this on a Sunday. And by now, as you can see, more problems have been uh, exported. But I'm doing something where I'm trying to keep a good balance between, you know, programming stuff and the rest of my personal life. And so these videos won't all be done in time, which is great because all the, uh, you know, the little um, leaderboards that might exist are those that I will be classed very low in. But that's not the reason why I'm doing this. I'm doing this because it's a fun small exercise where I don't need to be, you know, all into uh, making it right the first time around and shipping something in production. All the code in here is right once and forget about it, which is a great thing to make it a bit more fun. Although every time I get frustrated with an exercise, I hate programming again. So. We've landed the Universal Orbit Map Facility of Mercury, blah, blah, blah. You download a map of your puzzle inputs. Okay. Except for your universal center of mass, com, every object in space is an orbit across exactly one other object. So, I guess this should be, yeah. BB is an orbit around AAA, and so that is drawn using this. Okay. Nature wasn't corrupted, so there's a checksum to download. Whenever A orbits B, B orbits C, then A indirectly orbits C. This chain can be any number of objects long. All right. If we have the following map, center of mass, that one is a big center. That is a big center. That is a big center. And so, okay, all of them. That gives me that diagram, which is both a graph and a tree. Uh, when two objects are connected by a line, the one on the line on the right directly orbits the one on the left. Yeah, so the center of mass has only one of them, which would be the sun or something. We can count the number of orbits as follows. All right, D, C, B, count on all three orbits. Yeah, total seven orbits. Um, Okay, center of mass orbits, nothing. The number of direct and indirect orbits is 42. So direct would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay. And then to get the 42, then J, E, D, B, C, and come. J, E, D, B, C. Okay. So the way to do it then, I guess, is that each line counts for one, but this line here counts for two, that one counts for three, that one would count for four, five, six, seven, and then I would be adding for that one, that one would be two, and that one would now be eight, and I'm guessing that will this will sum up the big uh, 42. So let's get the puzzle input and do the counting of that. Uh, okay. Do I only have one center of mass on that? Yes. Okay. So there is only one of them. That's good. The, uh, this is day six. Previous to that one. Oh. Uh, I'm going to copy paste the little sample because that's going to be my little test in here. Just to think about it. Um, All right, Ooh, that one went really far. Uh, okay, I'm going to be in paste mode, which doesn't reinvent stuff. All right. So, um, knowing about other exercises like that, uh, there are essentially two approaches we can take for that one. Uh, one of them is a tree, because those are only one of them. And then the other one is a directed graph, of which a tree is a restricted subset, because a directed graph is more flexible. For this one, I'm going to use a directed graph. 
And the reason for that is that it is very easy to create a directed graph out of these uh, for the simple reason that each of the entity that we have uh, is going to be in a kind of random order. Because if I just go to um, the day 06 input, uh, no, those are all three letter. I don't assume they will always be three letters, but they are not necessarily in an order that is easy to parse and assemble recursively Oops, for that stuff. So a digraph uh, for which, let me see the library here, digraph uh, gives us, you know, an interface. It's using a net table, so add, remove, drop, blah, blah, blah for all of these. And it has algorithms like getting cycles, paths, and all that stuff. And then there's even a module named digraph utils that lets us do all kinds of uh, algorithms there. And from past experience, uh, filling these kinds of problems for the advent of code, those can be useful. And if you don't need them, well, you can kind of handle things like a tree by using the outages and the out neighbors that lets you know, like, all the edges that go in or out of uh, a given digraph. And so you can use them by finding the root, uh, which is easy because the... Uh, where is the, do you have subgraphs? Oh yeah, they let you know, for example, finding the arborescence root lets you find the root in the graph and all these functions are done for us. And so that's going to be really, really easy. So uh, considering that the input is just using a parenthesis for these, we're just going to have um, the edges are going to be equal to, and here it's going to be, um, each edge is going to be, uh, just call it E, save space on the line. Uh, oh, actually, it's going to be, it's going to be from A to B. Uh, yeah, I don't care for that. It's going to be stored that way. It seems of, uh, of a row, and I'm going to break them on the parentheses, and each of the rows then is going to be um, of the uh, Was this how this was defined? Just the day, and the day is okay. Yeah, just a string. That's good. Uh, on a line break, and so I'm going to append them so that I get a flat string. So, if we want to just do a quick check on that one. I'm going to essentially get, you know, I, B, C, D for each of these, I think. Is it that way? No, that's not what I want. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. This, because I only have one entry per row, this is going to be all I need. All right. So now I have all my edges, digraph, new, um, I'll just call it G for a graph. Let me see. Good. I do have options for a new one in here that might give me a few optimizations. New type of a graph, cyclic, yeah. It's, we have no cycles on these. So that, I assume, will um, create a few optimizations in what we have. Um, and so the thing that we're going to do now is populate the graph. And so I'm going to, because this is uh, using an ETS table, this is going to be a table ID, so I can do all kinds of destructive changes in my graphs and not worry about it. So. I'm going to do 
two scans. One of them is going to be adding all the edges and one will be to add all the vertices. But I'm going to start with the vertices because you cannot add an edge on what doesn't exist. So add vertices of G and edges, add edges of G and edges. And then I will be able to, you know, solve P1 on a given graph. So let's move here. Uh, when the edges are done, I'm done. My graph, I have A and B. And um, let's see. Do I have the entire list somewhere? All right. Yeah, I don't have a plural one. I do have it for the edges where I can add multiple edges. So that's nice. I'm just going to go see that one. Nope, that was delete edges. That was plural. All right. Um, so that one is going to be Niagraph add. And I believe that even though I add the, 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 the same vertex uh, multiple times, I'm not going to have a problem. So let's see. And so even if I do it multiple time, uh, vertices of G. Yeah, so they're only going to be there once. So here, the rest of the list, that's it. Adding the edges is going to be, once it's empty, we're all done. Let's be consistent in how we, and then all of that stuff. From A to B in a list towards detail of the list here. And G A to B, here we go. GT, and that's my digraph, it's full there. So if I want to solve for the part one, now I need to go recursively. And this would work as well with a tree or with a graph, but if I understood the problem properly, the thing I need to have here is going to be essentially, you know, let's start with this one. So this value of this one will just be, um, let's write it underneath. It's just going to be one. This one is going to have a value of two uh, because it's going to have its own value for the link and also L in there. Uh, this one here is going to be three because it's going to have its own value then the value for K and L. And essentially what we can see for that one uh, here, it's going to be one. And that one here would be uh, one for itself. Then I add the one for F, that's two. Then I had the three for these. And so that gives me, uh, what is it, five again? Yeah, it's the number of nodes beneath it. So I would have one, two, three, four, and five with all of these, and that gives me five on the weight, one for the one below. So the thing I can do essentially is just count how many children are beneath each link and return that as part of my sum. So this is going to be one plus two plus three plus one plus five, and that gives me the entire uh, weight of the graph. And that should be easy to do. So, uh, Solve P1. Yeah, it's not a very descriptive name, but and I have a graph. So the thing I'm going to do then is basically just recursive descent into the tree. And when you go on a tree, usually you have the pre-order, post-order, level order, all that kind of stuff, which just asks you like, how many do you visit the children before anything else and whatnot. So um, 
I'm just going to sum children uh, weight. And I always start, I think, let me see, the, uh, that's the wrong window. Do I always start on the center of mass node? Except for the universe, every object in space, exactly one. So this is always going to be the center of our graph. This is the root. We don't even have to look for it. Uh, out edges that start from the center of mass. And this is going to be the root of my tree. And it is going to have a weight of zero, I think. Um, and that should be the recursive function I have. So some children wait with G. Uh, when I have no longer any children, because if we go see into out edges, uh, out edges returns a list of all the edges that emanate from the graph in an unspecified order, and this is fine. So when I have a weight there with no children at all, that means I am at the end and I have, I don't even need this, I think. Then this is a weight of zero. And this is how I end the graph. This is all of it. Uh, those are going to be my children. And so what I'm going to ca calculate is essentially uh, uh, the sum is going to be the list sum of in list comprehension of G and okay, let's Oh, edges of G and a given node. And this is what I have where a node is one of the children. And that's it. Uh, that's going to be my sum. And what I'm going to add then, I'm going to return that sum plus um, the current node value is going to be the cost of um, all my children. So. That's it. I think that's the entire thing because that way, let's split my little screen here. If I'm on node center of mass, I'm going to have the length of my children, which is going to count for one here. And then I'm going to add the cost of all the sub children. So if I'm at D, I'm going to have a cost of two here uh, for my direct children. Then I'm going to count plus zero plus one for these children, plus three for these children, plus two for this. Yeah, I think that should work fine. And so we're just going to try that one. G isn't used, indeed it isn't. Um, the thing I'm going to do though is uh, example as usual, which I'm going to export the example. I'm going to make sure that it works with the result for 42 that I'm expecting here. Uh, let's go grab my toy input for this one. Uh, yeah, so all of this, join them on one line. For this entire string, I'm going to replace uh, space with a line break. Oh, not that way. Nope, nope, nope. I'm going to replace it with a literal line break. Oops, it's a bit too, uh, too direct. Anyway, so this is going to be my string. I assume there's also one at the end and I'm going to Just copy paste the thing. And here it's going to be the string instead. R3 compile. And the 06 
example. Bad argument. Tigriff new. Really? Uh, is it a list of arguments? That would make sense. Out edges is not. Oh, yeah. Graph and the center of mass because I don't know or I don't mention which graph to get it out from. Oh, that's a broken one. Why is that? Oh, each individual node has no weight. Because the base case is zero. What? No. Okay. Uh, I want to see all the calls to digraph public functions. Um, I want to see the result value. Scope by default is going to be fine. Okay. Oh, right. Oh, wait. Okay, so that's the name of the edge. Oh, yeah. I'm ca I'm reading the edges. I, I don't actually want the edges. It's, uh, what's the function? It's out neighbors right here because I want the other vertices. I don't care for the edges. And the thing that's happening is that I was breaking my uh, thing. So I'm going to revert my sum to zero because I'm pretty sure my calculation was all right. And replace neighbors. I think that's the British spelling. Yes. Out. Neighbors here as well, 75 characters, that's only enough, 76. Okay, that is probably more in line with what I expected. Uh, 11. Really? Okay, so. Oh, so I'm probably counting only the, the length of children. Should be fine. Let's see. Uh, 15. What the? All right. I'm going to go and uh, retrace my little body here. And we're starting here. Wait, okay, I'm adding edges. So out neighbors of the first diagraph on COM only gives me B. B, G, and C is all right. H, nothing. D, I, E, J, F, K, L, L, F. Okay, so I have these weight. This is the sum plus the length of the children. I'm going to go see what my children weight gets called. Advent uh, sum. Return trace and that one is private, so scope is local. Oh yeah, it's not in advent. It's on day zero six. So I get all the return values first. That is odd. All right, I'm going to pause this quickly, try to figure out what it might be without the little pressure, and I'm going to tell you right away what it was supposed to be. All right, so I got lost a bit, but um, during the little break time, the thing I did is I drew up the entire diagram to make sure it kind of makes sense in terms of procedure that was chosen for everything. And the other thing I did is I wrote my little function, uh, reworked it a bit and exploded it to see everything that happens. So I'm starting with the central note, then checking out all of the children, getting the weight of all the children in a recursive manner, calculating my own weight as the weight of all the children because that's what we came up with plus one and then i'm outputting it to see if everything is fine and i'm returning the result to see the recursive stuff so when i run it the thing i see is that uh generally the values are right one two um one two one one two three four five seven eight and twelve 
And the thing that happens is that this is fine. Uh, the 12 would be here and I probably don't want it in my calculation. So I'm going to uh, explode things a bit differently. But the reason why things were failing is that the value for the end result here is fine. The algorithm was correct. The problem is that I also want to add all of the weights that are no longer counted. So all of these values here also need to be counted. So I'm going to do this in two parts. The first one is that I'm going to uh, take, you know, the weight that I uh, need here from the com node, the first one, given it's ignored, I'm going to explode that into being a single child each time. And uh, so that's the entire thing. Oops. To blow that up here. And now I should have something where it stops at 11. That's the final value returned that will have to change. Um, and so for these, uh, the thing here is that I have like the recursion I have only gives me the value of each node and I want to sum them up. So I need to do some little magic about how the recursive part is being done. So I'm going to store in the own results, but I also want to store the C weights that I have plus my own weight. And to make that work here, that means that this entire list is going to be two values to get what I want uh, in terms of the C weights. And uh, this is going to be, I believe, the C weights plus all the own. Yep. Um, plus, let's just call it some sums. Okay. And let's see what we get for these. And for that part to work here, uh, I'm just going to unzip that. If I wanted to do that, oh. It's already the own value. And I want to actually the sums plus the own value, I believe. Let's see what that gives me. Yeah, here we go. We've got the value 42 on this one. So I'm adding uh, all the previous sums plus the current value, but returning only the current value, which is um, used to calculate these. And um, that gives me the individual weight node plus the double weight that I need. And so here, um, currently, I don't. I assume that I'm getting more than one children. I possibly down in the full problem, uh, but that's fine. Uh, and the thing I'll have to do here is eventually just be um, let's see. That's kind of simple. It's going to be. Uh, just, I want just the sums of the child node with this. And I'm going to do the little trick I showed on an earlier day about the uh, pattern matching on this one, where I want to ignore the top one. I only want the sum for this, so I wrap it into a sublist. And there, that should give me the, what's the problem with that one? Oh, yep. That should give me the 42 result I wanted. I'm going to drop this IO format. And I got the 42. So that means that if I run the part one, bad argument on line 83, that I roll back to the wrong result. Oh, yeah. When I went back to my thing, I had not done it on all the parts, only the example. part one, and that gives me this result that hopefully will be correct. Let's see, 11 stars, that worked. Part two, all right, figure out how many orbital transfers you need to take to get to Santa. Oh, so U is going to be the name of the node, I guess. Uh, you started the object, you are orbiting. Your destination is the San orbiting. So I do have the map, and if it's me, I want to get to Santa.
All right. To move from K2I, minimal of four orbitals transfer are required. So I am going from, oh, okay, K to J to E to I. So this is essentially just a path from myself to the other one divided by two. All right. Um, afterwards, or more, it looks like this. What is the minimal to move from the object? You are orbiting to the object. The sand is orbiting. Okay. Not between you and sand. That's going to be the same, just minus two. Okay. Output hasn't changed. So because I have a directed graph, again, this little thing here, um, I might need to add the edges in double. Because the, the thing is that this is going to be a shortest path uh, between two nodes. And the shortest path, if I go into uh, that graph, the shortest path is in, oh, here. Get a short path is a function already in the library, so I'm not going to need to implement a lot. As possible, simple cycle driven has a list of vertices, and if no, okay. Oh, this is between only one of them. Uh, okay, so the short path. No, that's three of them. That's all right. I was reading the wrong one. Or false is none of them exists. So breath first and the first path is returned. So we're going to try it. I'm pretty sure I'm going to need to... Uh, force the directed graph to become uh, actually there's probably a thing in the new function that I can use where's the new function oh, let me get there digraph digraph and the new function maybe I can force it to consider it to be a cyclic graph Cyclic, no. Okay, that's good. So I'm going to swap them, but that's not a big deal. Let's start by starting. So edge one, number one, number two. That's going to be fine. Um, and this is going to be only digraph. Uh, that was called, no, it was called get, I think. Um, get. Shortest. Oh. Yeah, it's get short path. Ah, there we go. Get short path. And I'm going to assume, well, I'm not going to assume, I'm going to check that it is indeed something like you to Santa. All right. To Santa, and I expect that this is going to give me. Whoop. And I'm going to do minus two because they only want the other objects. Uh, I'm going to assume that this doesn't work. I'm going to return to false. Only 30. Oh, uh, yeah. Let's start with this anyway. False, of course. So I'm going to want to add edges, but those are going to be flipped at the same time. So. Um, Y, X, four. Oh, those are lists. Edges, and I'm just going to re-add them. There's a bit of a cost to doing it ineffic inefficiently that way, but it should work fine. Uh, part two, the swap version is in there. Really? Oh yeah, I should allow cycles now because those are all cycles. Otherwise, it won't let me add them. So I've got the length here. I'm going to just rob the U and the center minus two, and that should be three seventeen. And let's see if that works. Nope, 
then it work. Your answer is too high. Interesting. So I'm going to drop this, get the result. Okay, did I read this improperly then? You are bidding. Your destination is Yumcheng. Santa is orbiting. Yep. I'm going to try it with this example input, then make sure that it works. I'm going to rejoin them the same way I used to. I think I get it. Um, K to J, J to E, E to D, to I. So they consider that to be four because there are four pairs. So the thing I have is that I have five values and that should be a minus three then because it's just uh, in-betweeners and there are one fewer edges in there than there are values. So here it's not minus three, uh, minus two, it's minus three. And that to work. Uh, Advent race. Uh, this is day six, not day four. And 19. Is it 19? Is that what I had a bit earlier? I feel like it was. Oh, no, that's the duration. 316. Okay. Should have made a bit clearer output in there. I had 316, and I used to have 317, I guess. Let's see what I had. 317 here. Yep. All right, let's go for 316. Oops. And that worked. This is it for today's problem. Well, today's day six. So next time we're going to be on day seven. Have a good time.